Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Unlike any other YouTube channel that showcases Pokemon Go PvP content, mine exclusively showcases Shadow Pokemon. So if you're into that type of content, I'd appreciate if you could like and subscribe. So let's get into today's video. Shout out to my friend, Jeff Love for this one. We're always having a bit of banter about Politoed and Swampert and I always reference Politoed as a poor man Swampert. Obviously, Weatherball did get nerfed last season. If you're wondering why Walrus is so OP, it's because it's still got the original stats of Weatherball, which is a Body Slam clone. So Weatherball did take a nerf. It now does five less damage. But we're going to try out Politoed anyway. I did invest an Elite TM, and I thought if we're going to have one Weatherball user, why not have two? So we're also pairing it up with Shadow Canto Ninetales, and we have a third Spam Monster in the Walrus which technically did have an old Weatherball clone, but it's called Icicle Sphere. It does five more damage. So we have got three Pokemon with 35 energy moves and we've got three Pokemon rocking nukes. Both the water types are an Earthquake and my Kanto Nine Towers is absolutely going to nuke the shit out of stuff with Overheat. So without any further ado, let's get into the battles. And in game one, we pick up a fairly neutral lead against the Nido Queen. They have built up 2-8, so I am going to respect the Earth Power. And this opponent actually goes straight Earth Power, which is great for us. I am going to fire off a Weatherball. Weatherball will near one shot from this range. We draw a shield with the first, I over farm by one fire spin and go for another Weatherball. As I've got two better responses in the back, I'm going to look to snipe down with my Walrus. However, they do make a last minute Poison Fang. This isn't going to do too much damage, but it does lower our defense. The opponent now comes in with a Venusaur, a bit of a questionable play. We have got lower defense. These Vine Whips are shredding, but Walrus is fast spamming. They let the Icicle Sphere go through and we manage to farm down. In the back is a Talon Frame. I throw two Powder Snows. This Icicle Sphere, they actually let go through. I'm hoping to make one more. Unfortunately, we do get incinerated down, but this game looks absolutely over. We can now bring in Polito, despite Weatherball being pretty garbage. We are going to be able to one shot from this health range. I shield up the bird. The opponent resets their debuff, giving me a free mud shot. I throw two mud shots, and for some reason, I throw four turns, and they get two incinerates, ten turns. This game is absolutely garbage, but either way, we are going to be able to take game one. Moving on into the next battle, we see Scrafty. This is going to be a huge problem for the entire team. Nine Towers is the only one that offers any fast move pressure. And if they go straight pop, we could get absolutely wrecked. We correctly shield up a foul play. And now I am going to go for a weather ball at the back to back. But most Scrafties love to shield. This opponent does shield. This is just a pop. I am going to fire off one more weather ball and hope the opponent does let it go. If they let this go, it will get them super low. I'm now going to aggressively swap into my Politoed and look to try a mud shot down. I'm not entirely sure about this play, but fuck it. We're going to try and make Politoed perform. The opponent now switches out into a Charm Ninetales. Weatherball won't do too much damage. You can see it is super bulky. The next Weatherball isn't going to KO, so I am going for the Hail Mary of Earthquake. Does the opponent respect the Earthquake? No, they do not. Get fucking wrecked Ninetales. Back out comes Scrafty. They do farm down. But they're not quite out of move, so I can now come in with my Walrus, Powder Snow down, and it's going to be about what they have in the back. In the back is Alolan Marowak, so this is going to be a bait game. I do sack my Ninetales, so now all we've got to do is either bait and land the Earthquake, or is the opponent going to call the bait? My playstyle always go for the Hail Mary of the Earthquake. The opponent correctly shields up, and that is going to be a good game. So most players always say you need to bait to win. Well, there's actually two win conditions because if I was the opponent, I'd call the bait. And if you're wondering why I play like that, it's because the only outcome where I've actually got a guaranteed chance of winning. Because if I went for an Icicle Sphere there, I wouldn't be able to bait again and land an Earthquake. It's so the only outcome where I could guarantee get a victory would be going for the Hail Mary. Moving on into the next battle, we led our Canto Nine Towers into Golbat. I took one Poison Fang and switched out into the Walrus. They stayed in. We managed to take it out with an Icicle Sphere and here comes Registeel. I'm looking to CMP tie on the Zap Cannon. The opponent throws a turn before, so this will be a Focus Blast. I've got no intentions of shielding up my Walrus because we've got an absolutely beautiful matchup with Nine Tails. The opponent switches out into Diggersby. Our switch timers are misaligned, so I'm going to throw an Overheat. The opponent shields it up and now it's time for Politoed. I'm going to get 
these weather balls off as quickly as possible. Weather ball isn't the best move anymore, but it does still hit four super effective. They're at the earthquake. So I'm gonna shield this up. We correctly shield up an earthquake. So now the opponent, if they throw before we reach a earthquake, this is just a fire punch. Fire punch with non-stab from a defense weighted Pokemon does absolutely sweet fuck all. This weather ball should be taking out the Diggersby unless they want to shield. And as the opponent's already seen Obi, once again, we are baiting. Hi, Reggie Steel. Bye, Reggie Steel. It doesn't actually quite one shot, but we can now switch out into Nine Tails and Fire Spin down. So, GG's and thanks for playing. So, once again, there, there was zero point in baiting, as I've already seen that we've got a uh, overheat. There was zero chance of them shielding it up. So in the next battle, we led our Kanto Ninetales into the Bear Trap. That's a pretty good matchup, but I do attempt to catch a Rock Slide onto my Polyrath. The opponent doesn't throw, and they hit us with an Earthquake. Then I'll switch up into Sableye. We are going to get off these two Weather Balls. This second Weather Ball will not KO, but I imagine the opponent might Shield. So we've now got Shield Advantage. This is fantastic, because we've got two Pokemon rocking nukes. I can now come in with my Nine Tails. I'm not going to Shield with this Foul Play. Nine Tails has reasonable Bolt, even as a Shadow. I'm going to Over Farm to the back-to-back -back weather balls. This weather ball will most definitely be taking out the low health Sableye. See you fucking later. One HP, boom. Not really a boom, but we're now loaded, full of energy. Should that Stunfisk wish to return, I would hit him with an overheat. They actually come in now with a Zoomerall. So I've still got two shields. I am going to spend one here on a play rough and I keep over farming. So should they wish to return with that Stunfisk, we could threaten it with an Earthquake. Earthquake lands on the Azumarill. We can survive any move from Azu here. Play Rough isn't going to do too much damage. And now I'm imagining they're going to try and sack the Stunfisk at some stage. I'm over farming as much as possible. This Earthquake will be taking out the Azumarill. And as I've got residual energy, I can just spam out Icicle Spheres. This Icicle Sphere will not KO, but we are going to outspeed them to the next one. The opponent is going to have to dump energy. They're looking to go to the back-to-back, -back, and that is going to be a good game. The opponent is going to have to spend their shield here. And we already had a move locked and loaded on the nine tail. So I hit the weather ball, and what the fuck is that? You see me hit the weather ball. A fire spin comes through. I've got no idea why that's happened. Luckily, nine tails does win CMP, even though they're at the back-to-back. -back. This weather ball is going to be enough to take this game. So you can already see, I think against the Talon Flame, the exact same thing happened. You hit the charge move and for some reason it throws a fucking fast move forced over tap i haven't seen that in a few seasons but it's back moving on into the next battle we see grass hole and this team is going to get absolutely fucking destroyed so bastard on into nine cells absolutely dreadful overheat does hit fairly hard but the smackdowns do shred us there's no point in shielding this move up they go for a leaf tornado Back out will come the wall face. We are still switch locked. I am going to throw an overheat to let the switch timer cool off. So I'm really great that this former legend is rocking such a bullshit team. In the back is Atropia. So I am going to bait the Blizzard. The opponent is going to shield, but it makes no difference because I ain't even running Blizzard. So the only win con for me now will be to completely fire spin down this Tropius and overheat the wall face but as we are a shadow variant these razor leaves are going to do far too much damage that Tropius is super healthy and we're already into the yellow and we are going to get resisted razor leaf down ggs if you're going to play go battle d you're going to see loads of grass hole and fast move pressure teams so be prepared to get very pissed off losing to bullshit teams in the next battle we see a trevident in the lead i correctly shield up a shadow ball so now i am going to commit to the complete Fast move farm down. This is just a seed bomb. It will get us quite low, but we are absolutely loaded. Can we nuke whatever's coming in with an overheat? I'm looking top right and I see a walrus. Are they going to respect the potential damage of an overheat? No, they are not. It lands, does huge damage, and I'll save switch into Politoed. In the back is a Reggie Steel. I am going to throw one earthquake here. If the opponent shields it up, I am just going to start spamming out weather balls. Our nine tiles is super low. So I'm going to want to lower the health of this Reggie Steel. I'm going to choose to burn my final shield here. And now it's Weather Ball Spam all the way just to get some guaranteed chip damage on the Tin Can. The opponent lets it go through. We are just going to spam out as many Weather Balls as possible to get this health super low. They already know we're not at an Earthquake, but the opponent is going to have to start shielding up something as the Walrus has hardly any HP. They still haven't shielded it up, so I've got no idea what they're saving that shield for. Perhaps Season 12, because the game is running like absolute trash. 
at this time, we now manage to fire spin down the Registeel. Back up comes the Walrus. We've already got a Weather Ball loaded. The opponent shields it up, and I show him my own Walrus. This game is absolutely over. And the opponent sees the writing on the wall and quit the match. Shout out to home size Henry for that one. Moving on into the next battle, we see a super scary lead in Shadow Zapdos. This thing hits like an absolute truck. We shield up a drill peck and the opponent switches out into Cresselia. Cresselia isn't something that my backline wants to see, so I am going to stay in. The opponent shields up the first move because they are scared of the overheat and dip. And I haven't got a response, so I'm just going to stay in and spam out as many weather balls as possible, hoping to draw the opponent's last shield. This second weather ball does get the Cresselia quite low. This next weather ball will put them in a range where I can potentially farm down. So the opponent is in the red. They are going to have to throw a move to take me out. I don't think Moonblast will KO from this range. and We should be able to reach one more weather ball. The opponent makes a great snipe with the Zapdos. However, Walrus can hit for super effective with these Powder Snows. We sneak one in. So I'm going to shield up the Drill Peck and commit completely to the Powder Snow farm down, which we do successfully if Cresselia comes back out. We could potentially Powder Snow down. They've actually got a Sableye in the back, so it's going to be Icicle Sphere Spam. They let the first one go through, and I'll make a sack onto my Politoed to catch the Foul Play. Foul Play does around half our HP. We should outpace to this Weather Ball. Weather Ball should be drawing the opponent's last shield. Or KO, the opponent chooses to let it go. I've got no idea what the opponent is expecting to do here as we are going to be able to outpace to this next weather ball and Warrain will win CMP against Cresselia. Looks like the opponent is trying to psychic cut me down but that absolutely isn't happening and Politoed is going to clutch up this game. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on into the next battle, we see a regular Marwal, not the Shadow Varian, in the lead. They're on Ice Fang and they are staying in. This must mean they're double weak to fire because a lot of people run double weak to fire teams in the Great League as fire is so uncommonly seen. I completely fast move farm it down. They come in with a Swampert, so I am going to throw the Hail Mary, see if they respect the Solar Beam. They do shield it up and I come in to Wall Rain. In the back is a Skarmory, so this game looks absolutely over. I am going to just spam out as many Icicle Spheres as possible. This second Icicle Sphere will get the Skarmory quite low, so I imagine the opponent will be tempted to shield. They do shield it up. I'm just going to save my shield for Politoed, and this game should be absolutely over. Sky Attack doesn't take us out. We get to one more Icicle Sphere. I undercharge it, as I don't really need to take out this Skarmory. I allow the Skarmory to take me out instead. We are going to be momentarily switch-locked. The opponent comes in with Swampert. I've still got two shields, but there's no point in shielding up nine tails. I'm now going to come in with the Politoed. This is just going to be a Hydro Cannon. We've still got two shields, but I'm not going to shield up a resisted Hydro Cannon. I'm going to go for the Earthquake to knock out this Swampert. Earthquake will be taking care of Swampert. See you fucking later, Swampert. Back out comes the Skarmory. We're going to outpace to the Weather Ball, but we actually mud shot down and get a nice two shield flex. Moving on into the next battle. We see Defense Deoxys in the lead. Most Deoxys run Thunderbolt and Psycho Boost. So I am going to call the Thunderbolt and we get hit with a Rock Slide. Ouch. So in return, I am going to go straight for the Overheat. Does the opponent respect the damage? No, they do not. So we get Farm Down, which isn't great, but we do get this DD quite low. They're only at five, so this will be a Psycho Boost. We tank that and look to commit to the Farm Down. So we've got some residual energy on Wall Race. And here comes Azumarill. We've both got two shields, but I don't feel like there's any point in baiting as Ice Sphere would do absolutely fuck all. So we go straight for the Earthquake and the opponent shields it up. I am going to shield in return as Play Rough is quite threatening from this range. And I'll switch out into Politoed. Let's see if the opponent is going to switch out. This is going to be a Play Rough, but Politoed will survive. Politoed is reasonably bulky for a Shadow and once again I am going straight Earthquake. Is the opponent expecting us to be on Legacy Earthquake? They must be weak to war in the back. They've actually got an Umbreon. So I am going to go Earthquake all the way. I don't know if Earthquake or Weather Ball are better DP. Weather Ball has been nerfed. So one Earthquake gets them quite low. And the play here for me is going to be hope that an Earthquake from Wall Rain KOs. So I'm going to come in. I am going to go for this Earthquake before they reach another move. You can see that in the yellow, if Earthquake KOs, we've got a Wing Con and they survive on one HP and a Dream. So I'm going to be forced to shield this up. But the Azu is going to outpace us and they're super healthy anyway. So I needed 
to save my shield and we're actually going to lose this battle. GG's to the opponent. Moving on into the next battle. We see another Trevident in the lead. They say switch to Warrain. Warrain isn't the best response. Nine tails. As Politoed has such a bad match against Trevident, I'm just going to use it as a damage sponge. I'm not going to shield absolutely anything. So hi Politoed. Bye Politoed. I didn't want to bring in my Walrus because Walrus has a good matchup against Trevent as well. So the remainder of my team has a great matchup against the Trev. So I just completely sack the Politoed. I come back in with my own Nine Tails. We're close to 100 energy. Weatherball will be taking out the Walrus from this range. And let's see what the opponent has in the back. In the back is a Swamp, but you can see my Switch Timer hasn't popped up. So I'm going to shield up the Hydro Cannon. And I'm going to throw a weather ball. The opponent is going to be forced to shield, fearing the solar beam. And now I'm going to make a dip into Walrus. And Walrus should be able to clutch up this game. The opponent brings in the tree. The tree is probably not going to shield. So hi Trevident. Bye Trevident. Get fucking wrecked, you annoying fucking tree. Back out comes the Swamper. We outpace to a weather ball. The Swamper really has got no choice other than to shield. So we do draw the opponent's last shield. I am going to shield this move up because the opponent isn't going to be able to bait us with a Hydro Cannon and land the Sludge Wave or Earthquake before we get to another Icicle Sphere. So Icicle Sphere is going to be enough to clutch up this game. GG's and thanks for playing. So those were the battles featuring my first attempt at using Legacy Politoed. If I'm honest, I'm not a huge fan. I still think it's a poor man Swampert, but the triple spam, triple nuke team was great fun. It did really struggle against counter users and really bulky teams like you saw in the Umbreon matchup. The nukes with non-stab just didn't quite do enough. So if I had potential for a stab earthquake, we could have actually won. But either way, a pretty fun team, a pretty unique team. You don't really see too many double weatherball teams, especially after the nerf. So if you're looking for a fun team for Go Battle Day, give this team a try. I'd just like to say thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.